MSB here, and Hero Fall has hit Hex. Set 5 is live, and today we're going to be doing some cracking of booster packs so you can have a look at what sort of things you can get from them. So, let's get started. To begin, I would like to preface that I love the new interface. Every time Hex iterates on the interface, it just looks so good. I love the new store options where it shows the, the number of cards you have out of the sets. Uh, amazing. I love the way this looks. It's now got the packs front and center, which is really where they should have been. Now, I've already bought a few packs. I bought 50 Hero, uh, Hero Fall packs, so let's go ahead and wheedle them down. Oh my gosh, click, click, click. I'm so nervous. Okay, so we're going to open about 20 or so today. We'll see how it goes, but let's start with number one and see what we get. There's some really good cards in, in set five. Okay, so let's take a look. Skittering Dark... Zentaz Zealot, Oaken Druid, Cloud Runner. Hey, you know, uh, a one cost 2 2 with flight in shards that are preferential for flying units. That's pretty cool. Let's take a look. Wayfaring Conqueror. Okay, so Diamond has a lot of love in this set. If you like playing um, fast Diamond Troop decks, uh, <laughs> normally called white weenie decks. Uh, this is going to be the set for you. Jump into set five and start getting these cards because diamond is going to be a shard to be reckoned with for sure. Search your deck for an outpost. Put in hand. Gain control of target out opposing outpost. Oh, that's kind of neat. Good little hate card in case uh, outposts become a thing. Okay, so that was number one. We'll stash the chest for now, and let's get going. Pack number two. Ooh. I love the new pack. There's some really good cards. We'll see what we get from our 20. Okay. Terribly Bog is additional cost to pay this. Sacrificed three troops. Neat. I had a little good in uh, Shin here. Okay. Heart of Embers. Create a Valor. Valor is one of the new mechanics. Uh, very interesting. Uh, one cost, uh, one one. And they gain the, the keyword Valorous, which um, some things also interact with. Uh, when you play a Valor, this deals three damage to target opposing champion or troop. That's pretty slick. I like it. Uh, obviously, that's like a mono ruby uh, deck because that was three shards, three threshold, three ruby threshold. So hopefully, we get a couple legendaries out of this. Twenty, we'll see. What I'd also love to get is a okay, up to two target troops. I'd also love to get um, a couple fireballs, uh, which is an uncommon card, which is great. Play socket a card, draw a card. There's a lot of uh, this Nulzan has a, a really good card this set. It's crazy. Steel Intel. Target card opposing crypt into your hand. Its thresholds become two. That's cool. The scrounge mechanic is really neat. Um, as an additional cost to play this, you void X number of troops from your crypt. If you do, this gets the following power. So you void two troops from your deck and you, or sorry, from your crypt, and then you gain two temporary thresholds. So neat. Pays for itself. Free card if you can pay the scrounge on it. Let's keep going. What else are we going to get? Let's get some legendaries going. Come on, legendaries. Here we go. Astral Sight, Gyronaut, Savage Stomper. A couple really good um, limited cards in this set, too. Should shake it up. Stratolith. Okay, seven cost is prohibitive. That's okay. But while this is in your hand, two and a, a unit you control gets plus one, plus one to fight this turn. Uh, each of these, uh, each of the shards now has uh, what's called a Prodigen, which is a troop that's, I believe, high casting cost, um, and then it does something for two resources while it's in your hand as a one shot, which I like. It's a neat mechanic. Uh, again, it's one of those, um, you know, cool digital mechanics. Verdant Mill. So that's one more troops. Play a resource if there are five or more conquest counters. Create a wild child and put it to play. That's neat. Oh, that's the that's the outpost. Another Cloud Runner. That's cool. So we get Vampire Prince. Okay, so this is cool uh, because it goes right along with the Vampire Princess and Vampire King, of course. This one, uh, the Vampire Princess hits actions, Vampire King hits troops, this hits resources. So super cool. You get Bloodstones in play, which is your own personal resource. Uh, deal one damage to each opposing champion for each vampire you control, and you heal for it. That's really neat. I, I think that's super cool. 2-2-1, two, two, uh, I don't think that guy was flying. I must admit, I, I didn't really look over a lot of the spoilers, so I'm running into these blind. It's been a busy week, so let's see. 
Okay, there's a rare. We really want... Um, there's a new dwarf troop that's rare. Uh, some kind of Robomancer, I think. Uh, oh, here's another outpost. Exhaust one more troops you control at a conquest counter. Five or more troops you control of rage. Okay, a little bit slow on that one. Sentoth's Zealot. Cool. Okay, let's see. Oh, another Vampire Prince! Oh, no, it does have flight! Oh, my gosh. Okay, so... Obviously, you'd run this Mono Blood. But can you imagine Mono Blood decks now with... Turn one, whatever nonsense you want to play. Turn two, Vampire Prince or Inquisition. Turn three, Vampire Princess. Turn four, Vampire King. That's a lot of life drain of flight with control options straight behind it. Cool. Rare chest. Nice. Okay. Let's keep on going. Double Vampire Prince. That's neat. That is neat. Okay. Let's see. Mama Yeti. Wrong turn. Put two target troops in the control at the end of the turn. If this is your hand, discard this. Until the start of your next turn. That's hilarious. Wrong turn. Okay. Cerulean Lookout. War Drums. Troop control attacks. A random card in your hand with the highest cost. Okay. Oh, Assault is another new mechanic. Uh, when a troop attacks, then if this card is in your hand, it executes the uh, the effect. So it, it's good to have these cards in your hands when you're, you know, on an aggro deck. So that's pretty cool. Cool. Or I'm sure there's going to be some that aren't specifically aggro related that are... You know, for the long run control decks that'll sort of swing in late game, I'm sure there's going to be some for that. Come on, fireballs. We want some fireballs. Let's do the fireballs. Nope, okay. So uh, the diamond and the sapphire. Okay, opposing troops have minus one attack and create a valor. Okay, so this one's pretty pretty cool. Um, I think there's. I think it wouldn't really work well in a. potentially in a, um, in a white weenie deck. Fierce Jessicar. That's that's cool art. Swiss Strike for a 3 3 2. Plays a non standard resource that steals 3 damage to that champion. That's, co that's cool. 3 3 2 Swift Strike. Nice. Dealing damage, uh, punishing for non standard resources. I can see that. Maybe not this set. I mean, you know, but Legacy, when you're running off of, you know, Pain Lands and all that other garbage, I could see that being a fun sideboard card. I mean, it's a relevant body. 3-3-2. Three, three, That's pretty good. Okay. No fireballs. How sad. Okay. Destroy target artifact. Or this gets Skyguard. Well, that's neat. Okay. Uh, not sure if you play that over Chompasaur, but... Well, that's target artifact, not constant. Okay. Well, whatever. I guess... Uh, Nature Reigns. Swift Strike. If the top card of your deck... Ooh, this is nice. When this attacks at the top card of your deck is an Ardent Troop, draw a card. That's good, because it's a 2-1 for 2 Swift Striker that also can draw cards. One of Diamond's weak suits. I like that. That is a good one. Undying Weaver. Put in your hand and lose 4 health. When this enters play, create a Spider Spawn. Yep, okay, 2-1. Okay, so it's it's the 2-1 version, not the, not the unblockable. Okay, yeah, why not, man? Create stuff, right? It's always fun. Obviously, you'd have a limited um, number of uses with that, unless you're like running a Blood Sapphire uh, Spider deck, I guess. Polyberry Pouch. Transform target troop into a random troop with cost plus one. Oh, that's dangerous. But very nice. That It, it is basic speed, so it's kind of like a Shardless Transmogrify at basic speed. With But it's cost plus one, not cost minus one, so that's... Ugh. Okay. Wise Magistrate, this is good. When an opposing champion plays a non-resource card, each card in the champion's hand gets cost plus two this turn. That is crazy. That is crazy. That is, it's Steadfast, not Swift Strike. Um, but at a two, that is very prohibitive. You drop that turn two and you are punching the opponent. Super hard, love it. Okay, that's the first 10. Got 10 more to go. Come on, legendaries. Let's do it. At least one, right? Oh my gosh, still no fireballs! Uh, when this troop enters play, deal three damage to target. I, I really do like the Ardent Allegiance and the uh, the Necrotic Allegiance, or uh, Underworld Allegiance, uh, because it's really changing deck building. You know, it's making you think, hey, wait, not only are the shards are important, but do I need to really consider what faction I'm going into here? Uh, kind of has that, um, what, Star Wars? What was the one that did a lot of factions? Star Wars or... Um, Five Rings, Legend of the Five Rings. Yeah. 
uh, ones that just make you think about that deck building. Okay, this is one of the cards that was actually uh, buffed slightly during the PTR. So now it's a 3-3-2 three, three, and at the start of your turn, a troop deals damage to you. Really good as, I think, a sideboard card because not only of the Sockable Major, which can reduce something's, you know, you probably do the reduce something's power by three. Uh, but really good for anything that has a troop that you hold back that does stuff like uh, Sight of the Sun or um, anything else that's just sort of one of those really annoying sticks around and makes everything else horrible cards. Uh, Reese. You put that on and every turn it's dealing two damage to them. That puts them on a nice clock like it. Good sideboard. Let's see what else. We got nine more to go. I might push it out. If, if we don't have anything exciting, I might, I might throw out a couple extra packs. Why not? Okay, another Zentazilitz. Obviously, somebody is trying to get me to make a, a Blood Sapphire deck. Puke Troll! <laughs> if this entered play this turn, X target troop gets this. Okay. So, uh, overcosted. Um, you'd have to see what the equipment is in PvE to see if it's any good. Satyr's Roost Bard. When you play a Valor, draw a card. Whoa. When the Centrist play, it gets plus one, plus one for each Valor's troop you control. Okay, if you're going to run a Valor deck, it's going to have to have this dude in it, because that is sick. Not only do you get to play a card on a Valor, not only do Valors turn into cantrips, but then it also busts this guy? That's rad. Of course, the two are kind of diametrically opposed, because it's it has to be in play to get the draw a card effect. So, you know... You'd want to... Well, no, because it's for each... That's right. It's for each Valorous troop, not for each time you play a Valor. So... Well, no, that's still a little bit. Anyway. Upgrade Technicians, really Lookout. I'm not even looking at the comments. Sorry. If you care about the comments, my apology. Okay. Pav Yazukan. This is good. Or Yazukan. 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 Scrounge 3. Okay, so it's a 4-4-3, four, four, which is fantastic already. And then Scrounge 3, when the center's play, destroy target opposing card. Target opposing card. Not even troop. It's just, it's removal. It's flat, constant, or artifact removal. Which is something, I mean, what? Blood's had to splash into, like, chaos keys and stuff. I know Wild has some constant removal. But that's nice, because it's relevant body and light threshold cost. Love it. That's a good one. That is a good one. Can we get a legendary in this in this set of 20? I don't know. Oop, Coral Crow Witch. That one's fancy. Puke Troll, Arden Officer. Uh, this is nice. Uh, I'm not sure if it's worth branching out into Diamond Ruby. The metal determined that. Uh, especially because this is a 2-2. A, a two -two. Yes, of course, it gives itself plus two plus one so when it attacks it's a four three for three um, but right now i mean gosh there's so many like double diamond threshold cards that are super strong i don't know if ardent officer is actually going to see play we'll see Rift <laughs> okay four for three two in the center's play create a random socketable troop you meet the threshold crimes to play and put it into your hand no Click. I mean, yeah, that can give possibly some value because it's socketable major. So maybe that can give some value in like limited play. But that, I mean, whatever. I I was wrong about Gallows Gas. Uh, Gallows Gas ended up being a fantastic finisher. Yes, yes. Oh wow, look at this bolt spasm. That's cool. One three one. That's nice. Twilight Revenant. I know. I'm I'm just I'm 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 teasing with the legendary because I don't want to open it yet. Okay, let's open it. Okay, here we go. Yes! Bowie Starlight. Okay, that's right. Create a Starlight and put her into play. This is the one that um, draws cards. Oh, no, that's for each card in your hand. Yeah, when Bowie Starlight attacks, draw a card. And when a Starlight you control attacks, draw a card. I think it's neat. I don't know if that'll actually see... Um, if that'll see constructed play. But I'd love to see what the equipment eventually is on this guy. And, of course, Bowie Starlight is a... Um, Homage to David Bowie. So it looks like we got about five more. We may do an even 24, perhaps. Because that was exciting. Lost in Time. That's cool art. Put our troop randomly into the top three cards of its controller's deck. Then that troop's controllers draw a card. That's, hmm. I suppose, yeah, you could, you know, cast it on their um, end of turn. Pack Hunters. Create four copies of it and put them into your deck. They get plus one, plus one. 
Okay, so it's strict card disadvantage. I I'd have to see what the what the equipment is. Maybe if that maybe the equipment will be like quick action, you know, create eight copies or something. Cause that could be really, really good for something like Pack Raptor. That could be pretty sick. Um I'm sure there's others. Time bug. I mean, you could obviously enable time bug up the wazoo with that, I suppose, if you're so inclined. Stash it. We're still looking for one of those um, Technomancers. Techno something or other. It's a dwarf troop that's super awesome. Oh, another legendary! Yes! Howling Plains Alpha. That is... That is... I love the art direction that they've had for set 4 and set 5. So good. Create a Valor and put it in your hand. That's fantastic. Let's attack Valor's troops. You can all get plus 1, plus 1 this turn. That's that's a that's a well costed card right there. I like it. I don't know if it'll see play, but I like it. Okay, valorizing. Put target valorous troop from your crypt into play. That's neat. Okay, Whew. here we go. Not another David Bowie. Melanth the Life Bringer. Six six six. When this enters play, each other troop you control gets life bound. Oh, this is the uh, the life bound is at the start of your turn. If you control a troop with life bound, put each troop with life bound from your crypt into play. Now, this is obviously, you know, it's, it's the whole dies to death blade argument. Yes, 666 six, six is cumbersome. It doesn't impact the board when it hits. It's not like Uranaz. But that's still neat. Um, maybe equipment, PvE equipment, will have some kind of on play effect. Because when you play something at 6 threshold, you normally want it to do something. You don't want it to hit the floor and be like, okay, guys, what up? Please kill me with something. Hey, I'm not, I'm not complaining. And, I mean, because you also get a legendary uh, chest, so that's cool. Okay. We're theoretically down to 7, 6, 5, 4, what, 4 more? Oh my gosh! Crazy! Yes! Okay. Destroy target non... Oh, okay, so casualty of war. This is like uh, the people who stay out of the fight get killed. That's cool. Should have called it like drive-by shooting or something. Let's see. The dormant one. Troops you control have plus one attack for each soul counter. When a troop you control dies, add a soul counter. That there are three or more. Transform this into the unbound one. Flight invincible. Other troops you control plus three. When this deals damage, revert it. Other troops you control plus three attack. Flight and invincible. So I could just sit on the board, like enabling fools. What was the what was the base card again? If there are three or more, then transform it. There's there's gotta be some good, like I saw people in the in constructed starting to toy with Shin Hair. Uh, but that was mostly uh, Diamond Wild um, Oath of Valor Shin Hair, but um, maybe Diamond Blood Shin Hair. You know, use Martyrs and Dormant One. I don't know. I mean, that's decently costed. Has a nice effect. Um, it you know when it when it transforms, it does something because you're you know the troops on board get the plus three attack. And then it, I don't know if it powers up counters while it's transformed or not. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. Let's just open more packs, okay? Hopefully we get more legendaries. What do we got? Okay. Can I get... Ah, oh, please give me some fireballs. Okay, opposing troops. This is... Misery is neat. Because Misery, not only is it a quick action. I believe Sorrow... Because the comparison is Sorrow. Sorrow is one cost, one blood. Troops, in general, get minus one, minus one. So this is really nice sideboard removal. You have triple blood, so that's prohibitive. Um, you can't play this out fast. But that's really neat that it's opposing troops, not all troops, and it's quick. War Party Guide, that's awesome. Love that card. Okay, let's see. Whoa! Righteous Vanquisher. Life Drain. Flight. Assault when a troop you control attacks. If this is in your hand, this gets cost minus one! Okay, I'm, I'm thrilled with this card. I like it. This is slick. Let's see here. So let's let's um, pay, let's get na napkin math this. So one troop on turn one, swing on turn two. Um, let's say one troop on turn two, swing on turn three, and it's so so. Turn three. This is five cost. To, uh, you're probably gonna, un unless you can keep the field clean, this one probably would work better in like Diamond Ruby if you have some uh, burn, some removal to, to take out some troops. Uh, but I do, I do like this. I mean, come on. 
the avatars and angels, those are those are just neat cards. And the art looks spectacular. The art is spectacular in this set. What am I looking at? I should I should look at more of the commons. Hey? Ooh, cool. Primal Prism. Gain a threshold of your choice or gain a charge. That's nice. There's some good resources out called uh, Wells. Uh, as I mentioned, I think, in a past video, you really want to make sure you get a playset of the rare resources if you can, because rare resources enable other decks in the future. Okay, here we go. So, let's see. Gosh, no fireballs. How sad. Spearcliff Captain. When this Antris play creates a Valor, this attacks Valorous Troop, get flight this turn. That's cool. I like it. Haunting Cry. That's slick art. Death Crawler. Let's see what we get. Indigo Trickster. Steals damage to an opposing champion. Transform a random non-resource card in the champion's hand into a random card of the same shards. That's crazy. That's just craziness. That's just craziness. Okay, <laughs> stash that. Okay, we will go down to 30, so we'll, we'll open up a total of 24. Let's go ahead and do this. Mama Yeti, another Misery, Scouring Light, destroy all constants. Whoa, that's some good hate. Okay. Exporsion. Exporsion? Exporsion? Hmm? Dreadlings. Dreadlings are neat. This is going to be a really good card. I know there's going to be crazy, uh, like, dwarf robot burn control deck things that are going to happen. Trust me, things will happen. Windborn Overseer. When an underworld troop enters play under your control, bury the top card of each opposing champion's deck for each underworld troop you control. Eh, five cost, I, I guess. Well, no, because she buries the top card. Because she's out. Bury the top. Oh, and it's as many guys as you have out. I don't think this will enable... At five costs, it's too high to enable a milling deck. But um, still neat. Uh, anytime you see these sort of unique mechanics, I like them. Because that just, you know, just crying out to make a unique deck with it. That fails miserably on the ladder, but is super fun in PvE. Which is why I'm so glad that Hex has PvE. Which, um, Adventure Zone 2 should be coming out in the next big push of content. I know we just got this released, so it's not going to be for a while, but uh, that'll be something very exciting. I'm really looking forward to AZ2. Okay, let's take a look. Dingle Whiz! <laughs> okay, basic transform target troop in your hand into a dingler. Put that troop into play. It becomes miserable and gets at the start of your turn. Revert this. Well, that's a really slick way to cheat out. What could you do? Chrono Daemon? If you did, like, Diamond Sapphire? Uh, what's the Sapphire one? That Sapphire one? That Sapphire Dragon? Uh, Eternal Guardian? You could cheese out. Um, obviously, it becomes... It, it's vulnerable for a turn. But you can... Exactly, since this is basic, and this has to live for a turn... I don't like. I don't think it's gonna see a main deck play, but but this is an interesting card for sure. Anytime you can cheat things out, it's nice. Okay, so here we go. We are on our last pack. Let's see what we get from the final pack. Okay, no fireballs the whole time. How dare you? How dare you, Hex? Looks like I am not on the white list. Okay. Let's see here. Anything else interesting? Adamantium War Priest. For each Valorous troop you control. That's neat. And it's a cleric, which is awesome. Because we love clerics, for sure, for sure. Blazing Hammer is a really good spell. Well, I shouldn't say really good. It is a good spell. It is another burn, which is always nice. Okay, so let's see what our last rare is. Ripple of Janajnero. <laughs> I don't know how to pronounce that. Janaigo? Janaigo. Janaingo? Whatever. Some I'm, I've just triggered someone horribly, and they're on the you know, bottom. Oh my god, I can't believe that must be. Okay, when this centers play, put each opposing non cast troop with cost one or less into its controller's hand. When a troop you control attacks, if this is in your hand, increase the bolded number by one. Interesting. Okay, so what I like about this is it has an entrance play effect. 
there could be some kind of um, diamond sapphire aggro -y deck with uh, that. There's an owl card that's uh, pretty nuts. Um, and then if you if you bump this up to like three or four, you can hit most of the really annoying troops, pop them back in the owner's hand, and then swing and kill. Uh, this would also work great with uh, Ancestors Chosen. If you do like uh, an Ancestors Chosen deck, and you're you know Ancestors Chosen and um, the other Chaos Touch dude that I can't remember the name of that can draw. Oh no, can't draw a card in course. That, that was the gem. <laughs> well, uh, by the way, yes, gem rotations happen in set five, which is exciting. I think everybody has been sick and tired of the um, Hierophant. So we'll see where the meta goes from here. I like this card. I could see it being as uh, uh, an extra sort of uh, a more damaging potentially version, a more potentially damaging version of like a Menacing Grolk, perhaps. Uh, that'd be neat. Excellent. Well, that wraps it up for the 24 booster packs. Of course, I certainly wish you the best of luck in your pack pulls, and if you haven't already, please take the time to subscribe, and as always, I'm MSB, wishing you good games and good times.